Hi there! This would be our last video and in this video I'm going to tackle a topic about debugging. Basically, why do we implement monitoring? The reason is to detect the moment of time where something went wrong with our data and model, intervene and somehow fix the problem. Basically, that's the idea. And now I'm going to show you how you could run debugging with help of Evidently library, which helps you to build a visual dashboards and test suites to see what's going on with your models and other parts of your data pipeline and maybe faster come up with the hypothesis of what has happened. So let's go back to our Grafana dashboard, which we just built, and assumed that together with this dashboard we also have some thresholds for each metric so we know where to send an alert where something went wrong. Let's start from prediction drift. Let's assume we have a threshold somewhere here and at the February 2nd we see that our prediction drift went above the threshold. In this case we could intervene and try to grab our logs to see what went wrong with our data. So let's do that. For doing that I suggest us to go to our Jupyter, create a new script and analyze those parts of the data. So again it was let me check February 2nd, let's remember the date, and let's try to dig deeper and figure out what has happened with our data. So we simulate the debugging of our uh, model. So I will create a new Jupyter notebook. I would call it debugging New York taxi data. I would create a label here, a header, And let us start from loading a couple of nice libraries. I'll start from the standard ones. We're also gonna need to import Evidently here. So basically we are going to use Evidently reports and Evidently test suites. So let's import those objects together with canon mapping. Together with individual metrics, which we used before, where we tried to create Evidently report and derive some metrics for future monitoring, and Evidently we also have metric presets. Basically, metric presets are well-combined metrics, which helps you to build a report uh, and address the specific part of data pipeline. For example, um, data drift preset, which addressed the moment when you create new feature set, for example, in your data set and need to make sure that your data distributed similarly together with your reference data set and other metric presets like, for example, classification performance or regression performance or data quality. So they address different parts of your data pipeline so you could create a report and see what's going on with your data. So here I suggest us to use metric preset, which is data drift. Together with reports, evidently also offers you test suites. Test suites are the objects which contain a lot of different tests, which helps you to figure out whether the matrix value is exactly as you expected. So basically it helps you to compare metric value against some threshold. So let's import test suite and later see how it looks like. As we just saw in metrics, for test suites we also have test presets. Basically these are a combination of tests that helps you to tackle specific data related problem. For example, data drift test preset or data quality test preset or data integrity test preset. In this case, we will continue working with data drift, so I'm going to import data drift test presets from evidently test preset. Basically, that's all what we need, and now we can move to the next step, which is import data we need to analyze the 2nd of February, so to analyze the moment of time when we have when we had pretty high data drift value for our prediction function. So let's do that. Let me load two datasets, reference and the current. My reference dataset will be reference data, which was the validation data from the moment we trained the model, and my current data would be the February dataset, which we used to simulate the production usage of our service. Data is loaded, so now I can load my model. Now 
Now I'm going to read model, so I'm using mode read binary. Here we are. So now let me uh, create the lists I will need later to uh, come up with column mapping. Then I would need to select the problematic parts of my current dataset and I will be able to move to the reports and test with generation. So let's um, do a couple of preparatory steps. I would go to my baseline model creation notebook because there I had my list of numerical and categorical features. So let's just copy it from there. I would copy the whole block with data labeling. I would rather say dataset labeling. That's it. And now let me create my problematic part of the dataset, which is the current data for the 2nd February. What I'm going to do now is to select the correct rows related to my selected date. Yep, it's done. So now I have all my prerequisites. And now let's build the test suite in order to see which tests related to data drift were failed. I would start from column mapping object, which I'm going to share between my test suite and report because the structure of the data will not change. Basically, I just specified my numerical and categorical features. I also specified how to call it prediction and I specifically set target to none because I'm not going to analyze target. So I saw the prediction drift, so I wanted to check what has happened with prediction. I interested in what's going on with my features, but target here is not needed. So this is how I can exclude the column from the analysis. Yep, it's done. Let's start from the test suite. Test suite object has very similar structure to the report, but instead of metrics, we need to set which tests we want to calculate. Like reports, test suite includes individual tests, so you can list any tests you like, and there are plenty of tests in Evidently library, so you could observe it from documentation or just see what tests are there. Or you can use test preset, which is a very nice starting point. So I'm going to list my data drift test preset in tests argument. So let me write tests. That's it. So in order to calculate values, I need to use method run. And I'm going to pass there my reference and current datasets together with column mapping. Let's try to run it. And we can see that there is a value error. Let's see the output and evidently tells us that the prediction column is partially present in data. So basically we could conclude that we never applied our model to the current data set there, so we just loaded the initial data. This is why prediction is not presented there. So let's first apply our model to the problematic data set and then try to run our test suite again. And we need not to forget to fill our missing values with zeros. Let's do that. So now should be better. Let's try to run the suite again. Yeah, now it were successful. So now let's try to visualize test results. Here is the result. Like a report, there are several ways how you can visualize or render test suite results. There are the 
HTML output, which we are observing right now, and also JSON format and Python dictionary formats are available. Those formats are very nice if you are calling your test suite results from, for example, data processing pipeline and you need to run some tasks dependently on what you get out of your test suite, for example, to run some downstream tasks if all the tests were successful or run some debugging script if there are some broken tests. So in this case it's just a bit more convenient to use the output in Python dictionary formats if you're loading data to some databases for example in, for the sake of having those data stored and then have a chance to analyze your historical data. In this case you might want to use the output in JSON format. But now we are, need, we are going to perform some analysis right there in our Jupyter notebook. This is why we use the HTML format and just called method show with mod inline. So let's see. Here I have a very nice summary which tells us that there were eight tests, only one was successful and seven failed. So there is a lot of data drift, right? Now we can open up any tests, for example start from the first one, which is share of drifted columns, so we can click on details and see that, well, there were seven columns, six out of seven has drift detected, so it's eight, 85 and 7 percent, and you can see the pretty nice table which allows you to see which tests were applied to each columns, what was the drift score, what was the threshold, and the results, right? So you can pretty much come up with the intuition of why you see such a lot of like drift there. Together with share of drifted columns, you have a test for each individual column, so we can open up a couple of the most interesting columns, for example, and see uh, what you have there. For example, we have a prediction. Let's just open the prediction here, and we can see that there is a shift in the distribution. So we, for example, can zoom in and see that there are a lot of values from reference which we've never seen in the current part of data. Maybe that's the reason why we detect the drift. Right. And there is also passengers count column where we cannot see any drift, which makes total sense, right? So we do not expect to see any drift there. Well, yeah, looks pretty safe and pretty stable. So that's how we can use test suites to fastly debug and see what tests are broken. And this is pretty useful because you do not need to implement any tests yourself. You just import all the tests you are interested in from Evidently and see visual report. Looks pretty nice. So now let's check how we can use reports in order to support our analysis and debug what's going on with our data. So let me create a report object. Here again I'm going to use drift related metrics and instead of listing all my metrics individually I'm going to use data drift preset. And now I need to run my report. Yep, it's done. So now let's again observe it in HTML format because we are doing analysis right now and we prefer to see some visuals. And here is our result. So you can see that there is pretty nice visual dashboard, which you can load right there in your Jupyter notebook, or if you need to share, for example, those reports with your colleagues, especially ones who do not do a lot of Python scripting, you can, instead of method show, use method save HTML and generate standalone HTML, which can be opened just in browser without any Python and other libraries installed. So I continue work with Jupyter, this is why I used method show here. And you can see that this is pretty nice report which tells us that there is dataset drift, dataset drift is detected, uh, and this was the drift threshold. So more than half of my columns from the dataset has drifted. And here you can say uh, you can see pretty similar statistics. So well, there is a table. We can open up different columns and see what's going on here. For example, let's open now something else like fair amount. And you can see that reports generally contain more information compared to test suites. Because in test suites the basic idea is to check whether the metric value um, is below or 
like above the threshold, so whether the condition is violated. But in reports, the idea is to give you as much information as possible so that you can understand your data better and come up with some ideas or maybe come up with very nice discussions with your product team or business analyst so you could come up with the conclusions or good ideas altogether. So here you can see distribution, right? So you can see that there is some shift, especially if we zoom in right there and see that, well, there is pretty different values for current and reference data, right? Pretty different uh, bin heights. And uh, we also have a data drift tab where we have the raw value based plot. So maybe pretty often it's easier to analyze the trends using these data drift tabs and see that, for example, here you can see pretty nicely um, plotted trend, right? So we can see that in current data set there is a fair amount that gets pretty high, right, especially at the end. So basically we can see something like a linear trend. And that might be your good starting point in order to come up with some ideas of what's going on with your data and creating some solutions, right? That's how you could use these reports. So basically that's all I wanted to share with you in this video. I hope it will help you to generate some intuition how you can use evidently in order to debug faster and potentially fix your issues faster if you saw something in monitoring. And well, that would be the last video of this module. I want to say goodbye to you and I want to thank you for being such great students because you watched this model to the end and I want to wish you a best luck with your education with those course on all your data related projects.